Our lives revolve around our mobile phones these days. The device that not only rules the mind and the soul, but the one that has taken center stage in everything we do. Gone are the days when just roti, kapra and makan were considered basic human needs. Mobile broadband and smartphone today have made it to that list too. In fact, maybe a little higher in that pecking order. After all, you can miss lunch, but can you stay without your phone for more than a few minutes? And why not? After all, they have become the most powerful tools we use today. Be it our daily lives, productivity, work from home, remote education, remote health care, being in touch with family and friends, social communication, entertainment, name it, and your phone does it. With 600 million plus mobile broadband subscribers, even the lockdown became less painful. From education to entertainment, the medium has allowed people to be productive at the time when life completely turned upside down. All this is being possible with multiple technologies coming together, be it 4G, Wi-Fi, OTT, location, video conferencing, gaming, apps, security, and enabling use cases such as online seminars, distance education, navigation, mobile payments, and remote healthcare. Yes, all of these converge together to make that magic happen. A combination of these technologies help simplify applications such as Ola or Uber, Maps and Navigation, Teams and Zoom, contact tracing apps such as Arogya Setu, so many more. So we've established now that the phone is the omnipotent and omnipresent device that runs our lives. But what about the flip side? What if we did not have phones? Imagine your life if this entire serious tech wasn't around you. Sends a bit of a shiver down your spine, right? But you know, the purpose of this series isn't to talk about what if. Instead, it's about how does. The phone is a remarkable product and does remarkable things. But how? How does it do all the things we do when we just click a button or touch the screen? How does a phone conjure up these incredible images when we play the latest high-end games? How does it stream the latest songs or movies off the internet? How does it shoot a picture in near pitch dark or shoot a rock steady video when we are moving? Or automatically switch to save battery when it's starting to run down or even charge our phones at these high speeds that we've never seen before? Have you ever thought about what all happens inside, within a phone? Away from jargon and high sounding terminologies, this series will break it all down for you in the simplest of terms. It's time to meet your phone and say hello to it, not on it. It's time to truly get introduced to your phone and understand its heart and soul. And the biggest heart and soul and brain of your phone is of course, its processor. Yes, we all know what it is. We think we buy our phones based on those specs. We are thrilled and we are told this is a high performance phone. But what does it all really mean? Yes, the processor is responsible for integrating all the technologies in your phone and plays a key role in defining the user experience. Today, we are starting this series where in each fortnight we will bring you different experiences and how these are enabled by processors. Break it down till you know it better than your rocket scientist or engineer friends. Talking of processes and the variety of technologies that are integrated into it, one company that stands out as the central one to the ecosystem and playing a key foundational role is the wireless technology leader, Qualcomm, through its Snapdragon range of products. Founded in 1985, this company has been on the leading edge of connectivity innovations. It has played a major role in developing cellular technologies going all the way back to CDMA, 3G and 4G, but are also the front runners in developing 5G. In fact, the company announced its first 5G modem all the way back in 2016 and commercialized it in 2018. The company has also paved the way with leading innovations in mobile technologies for optimal delivery of various forms of data, voice, video, gaming, and a whole lot more. Suffice it to say that Qualcomm has played a big role in almost every smartphone you've ever used. Now, the average user might not know exactly what goes on inside his or her phone, which is why in this series, we will bring experts from within this company to demystify it and help us understand what goes on inside a Snapdragon processor, what they do to enable various features and experiences, and how these are differentiated. We'll also be joined by the experts of the tech industry to share their experiences, talk about how they're enabling some features, how the processor and platform is a key part of that journey, and more importantly, how it defines our mobile lives today and how it will redefine it tomorrow. The now 
and the future. So come, join me on a journey and adventure like never before. A journey into your phone. We did something else very interesting. We went out on the streets to find out from people, what do they know about a processor? I mean, do they just know that it runs your phone fast or faster? Do they know the kind of features that get enabled because of it? What does a processor really do? What does the general public really think? The processor, which is uh, the main, what you call the motherboard kind of a thing of a phone, which makes it smart. I think the processor. I think the applications that are uh, programmed in it. The processor mainly. The processor and yeah, the processor. It basically helps it uh, run smoothly. It provides speed to the phone. It makes the functioning easy. No, not really. It actually boosts the speed of your like overall performance, like the, the calling and then the apps. It makes the phone not hang and like run faster, I guess. And like we can use as many apps as we want. Qualcomm. Snapdragon. Qualcomm. Qualcomm is one. Snapdragon. So part of this special series, we thought we'll do something very special. Speak with Rajan Vagadia of Qualcomm and find out from him what they really think about it. I'm going to start off with the first one. Look, for most of us, we think of Qualcomm and Snapdragon processors and everything as a processor company. This is what we use and this is what is inside a phone. But how do you, people at Qualcomm, how do you think of yourself? So interesting you ask this question. So let, let me start from the very beginning. So Qualcomm started in 1985, more like a startup. Even the first business we got into was called Omnitrax, which was a two-way satellite-based communication. And then rest we know is the CDMA, arrival of CDMA, 3G, 4G, and now we are talking about 5G. Qualcomm has always taken long-term bets, and this has helped us bring new technologies and new Transformation R&D every decade, decade by decade. The semiconductor part of our business is not just for phones. We, we have semiconductors which go into routers, into infrastructure products like small cells, into smart watches. And, and then, just to let you know, the latest is we are there on the rover which went to Mars. Rajan, you know, the other big thing is congratulations are in order because uh, the company now is actually founded in 1985, so you've completed 35 years. I'd love to know a little bit about the journey, about what it was in 1985, how it's evolved from there. The company started with actually seven professors and engineers in 1985. It was founded by Dr. Ravin Jacobs. The goal was simply to have data and data communication primary use for industrial growth and the future of industrial growth. Today, Qualcomm has 175 offices across the globe with 37,000 plus employees. And, and not to forget that $62 billion worth of R&D money has been spent. And we have 140,000 plus patents which are filed and existing. In India specifically, we are here for the last 26 years. And we have more than 10,000 employees here. So Rajan, you know, we established on the show that the processor is the main reason that we actually get to use a lot of features and get a lot of enriching experiences when we use our phone. Can you tell us a little bit about how the processor does all this magic? It is all about the design principle. The design principle is all about ensuring that you have the right data flow. So when you start designing, you start with a, the in the mind, the concept of a communication theory, a data flow, power management, thermal management, and that then goes into becoming a solution, a system level solution. That's why we would like to call it a processor. We'd like to call it SOC or the system on chip. What started as a simple exercise of packaging transistors has moved from packaging a few billion to tens of billions of those processors, sorry, transistors on the processor or the SOC. Just to give you an example, Raji, the line of codes that the processor typically carries today, a Qualcomm processor, is 100 million lines. And just for you to appreciate what 100 million lines of code means, is that if you take an operating system like a Windows, a typical operating system like a Windows 10, it has 50 million lines. 
So you're talking about almost two times the line of code that's written and processed on an SOT on a call comm system. Okay, Rajan, tell us a little bit about the future. This is crystal ball gazing time for you. Tell us, where do you see the future? I mean, will the smartphone still be the central hub? Will it still be the most important device? Will it change with this IoT and other things that are coming in? How do you see the future pan out in the next few years? I think as I said, Rajiv, this is a pivot moment and uh, all of us will see a dramatic change uh, with the arrival of 5G. Uh, the world will change because now it's everything, everyone, everywhere is connected. With 5G, you are going to talk about how technology is going to impact affect and drive fundamental innovations in even industries. You will have industries getting transformed, automated. Our lives personally will transform. The device story will play a far bigger role. Cities are going to get transformed. They're going to become smarter, smart or far more smarter. The way we commute is going to change. The day-to-day -day life, which was surrounded, let's say, around just the mobile device, now will also get influenced by everything around around that mobile device and our light which gets connected. We'll continue to define the way we communicate, we compute and we connect. Thank you Rajan for speaking with us. I really hope that in this special series that we're doing with you, you get to join us once again. Always a pleasure.